You know, we started this deep technical review on the all new Cadillac product lineup roughly two years ago. First, with the CTS V Sport that we started out in Santa Barbara, California. And then, just a couple months ago, we did the ATS V out at COTA, the Circuit of the Americas racetrack out near Austin, Texas. Now, here today, we're here to talk about the big daddy of them all the all new Cadillac CTS V. We are here in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, and we've got a deep review for you. Let's get started. You know, you've heard from me three times now that at the heart of any high performance vehicle is the engine. Well, the new CTS V is no different. This is the new LT4 6.2 liter supercharged V8 that puts out 640 horsepower, 630 pound-feet of torque. It's a very efficient, lightweight package, yet extremely powerful. How do we do that? First of all, we've got aluminum block, we've got aluminum heads, we have titanium intake valves, we have sodium-filled exhaust valves, and we have a new, lightweight, efficient supercharger from Eaton, that 1.7 liters. It's got a smaller turbine, and it spins up faster and more efficiently. We also have a 10-quart oil capacity with a wet sump so we can maintain outstanding lubrication through the highest of G levels. The difference between a wet sump oiling system and a dry sump is first of all the wet sump is lighter in overall mass. It means that you can have the oil closest to the engine in the oil pan and it's not with a remote reservoir. Whenever you have a re remote reservoir like you do with a dry sump it means that there's a reservoir somewhere else and you need to fill the lines between the reservoir and the engine with oil. That added weight and cost and length of line between the reservoir and the engine is effectively inefficient. We have a wet sump here where we get the oil closest to the bearings and they're uh, fully lubricated and fully immersed. With 640 horsepower, 630 pound-feet of torque, how do you get that power to the ground? Through the transmission. Let's go take a look at it. You know, behind every CTS-V is the all-new 8-speed automatic transmission. There are no manuals this time, and I know Moto Man's going to be whining as to why are there no manuals, but the truth is, is that in this segment, there's insufficient volume to justify uh, putting a manual in it. This new 8-speed, though, is uh, paddle-shifted. It's got response times that are equal to the fastest of the DCTs yet it has the refinement and the smoothness and integration that you'd expect from a Cadillac. With the 150 millisecond upshifts using paddle shifters, um, we're able to achieve that with a 258 millimeter torque converter down from the 300 millimeter that's in the six speed. It's also 27 and a half pounds lighter than the six speed it replaces. The reason we chose an automatic over a DCT is that they're actually lighter. If we had to use a wet DCT in this rear wheel drive application, it would be several kilograms heavier and the shift feel and the shift refinement would be nowhere near as smooth and as sophisticated as we get with an automatic. So the long and short of it is the new uh, Mercedes E63 AMG has a DCT tr transmission with 150 millisecond shift time. This GM8 speed has the same type of shift times, yet it's more smoother and refined and it uh, doesn't have any of those firm bumps that you get with a DCT. That's why we chose it and there's no heading back. For any car to go 200 miles an hour, you have to carefully manage the airflow. We have total airflow management here. The air that goes underneath the car, the air that goes over the car, and the air that goes through the car. The air that goes through the car is what we use to cool the engine. And we used every square millimeter on the front of this car for airflow. One other thing that we did to maximize airflow is we actually reduced the size of the badge. With the new Cadillac badge, new for 2015, we actually eliminated the wreath. But when we did that, it also gave us the opportunity to go to a smaller badge so that we could get greater airflow through the front of the grill. So this badge here is smaller than you see on some of the other cars, and it's very purposeful. We took that added area and it allows us to get more air into the radiator for improved cooling. We have 
outboard coolers here that this one serves as a low temperature radiator for the supercharger. On the opposite side, we have a supplemental radiator for the uh, engine coolant. In the center, we have a transmission oil cooler in addition to two large radiators. And that's what's required to cool all of the hot fluid and heat rejection that we create from the 640 horsepower. In terms of the air that's going through the front, it enters through the upper grill and lower grill, and then it has to exit. And it either exits through the hood with this extractor that's here that actually helps cool the engine, helps reduce front end lift by allowing the air to exit through the engine and not try and lift the car. And then we also take air through the lower inlet and we take a horizontal cooler, a 14 row transmission oil cooler that's on the bottom side here. And we also use it to cool transmission fluid and the fluid from the rear differential. It's the way we manage the air that enables this car to be stable at high speed. We actually add downforce to this car with the carbon fiber package that has the chin splitter and the spoiler in the rear. At speed, we actually create downforce and we add understeer as the car goes faster and that makes it stable at 200 miles an hour. And there's also an integral brake duct that comes from the front of the car. Channels the air into the wheelhouse and then there's this deflector which takes the air and routes it to the back surface of the rotor so we can keep the brakes cool during maximum braking. In addition, one of the things that allows this car to have the steering response that it does is the very stiff structure. We enhance the structure for the V-Series with several elements. When you have the large tires with Michelin Pilot Supersports with 265 millimeters of track width up front, and 295 millimeters in the rear that can create tremendous patch loads through the tire. We went ahead and added this aluminum shear plate that covers the bottom of the vehicle here. It not only adds a opportunity for smooth airflow underneath the car, it adds tremendous stiffness. It's also supplemented by a tower to tower brace that goes under hood, braces that go from the motor compartment rails down to the cradle, and also braces that go from the radiator tie bar down to the motor compartment rails. When you put all those together, you get 25% increased torsional stiffness. In addition to the stiffness that we added through the structure, we took the typical bushings that are on the lateral links and we replaced them with cross axis ball joints. These are very stiff joints that have zero compliance, yet they articulate. Now they're not on the, on the ride side, they're on the handling side. So the lateral links in the front and the two lateral links in the rear have all the joints replaced with these cross-axis ball joints that gives you very precise steering and responsive action. Whenever you're trying to get 630 pound-feet of torque to the rear wheels, one of the risks is you're going to have power hop because you're trying to accelerate the car so fast so you can get this 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. You've got to get that power to the rear wheels and you've got to keep the rear wheels from going into resonance. You might ask, what's resonance? Resonance is when something cycles in an uncontrolled fashion, and you sometimes get that with power hop. This vehicle is free of that because of the steps we took with the stiffness in the prop shaft and the asymmetric stiffness that we have in the rear axles. And one of the things that we did here is we increased the diameter of the prop shaft and we increased the wall thickness of the prop shaft so it can handle all that torque. The other thing that we did was we went to asymmetric rear half shafts. We have a 52 millimeter half shaft on the driver's side, a 26 millimeter on the passenger side, and that allows us to decouple the torsion and the uh, stick slip of the rear tires it's so that it doesn't drive back into the car and there's no power hop here. When you get into the launch mode and you brake torque and you put your left foot on the brake and your right foot on the throttle at 1500 RPM, you then set the car into launch mode and then you watt it this thing takes off clean and clearly with zero power hop. At the rear of the car, we also added structure. We added these additional rear support braces and we boxed them out, adding additional stiffness between the rear suspension cradle and the body. This in helps improve the rear suspension stiffness, which adds uh, cornering power to the vehicle. We've got the added cross-axis ball joints on the added links. There's four here. 
uh, two per side. And then you can see the half shafts where the left hand side is a different diameter than the right. Again, 52 millimeters here, 30 millimeters on the, uh, the passenger side. You know, if you watch the ATSV film, you saw that we used a similar approach with asymmetric half shafts in the rear. But in this case, we needed to separate them even more so with the 630 pound feet of torque, up almost 200 pound feet of torque we needed to have greater differential to be able to get the torque to the ground without the resonance that I described earlier. Moving to the back, we have active exhaust on the CTSV, meaning that it's a standard system, but there's valves that are added to the tailpipes at the end. And when we go ahead and open these valves, we can reduce the back pressure dramatically, and it allows us to bring that rich V8 sound to the, uh, to the car. And at 3,500 RPM, we open up those valves and that sweet V8 sound comes through. As you trade between the different modes, between tour, sport, and track, you increase the amount of time you spend with the valves open. And so they're most open in track, less in sport, and then it's most sophisticated and refined in tour. That's one of the ways you can change the character of the car with the touch of a button on the console. One of the magical devices that allows this car to have the precise steering response, the stability, and the ability to exit the corners at maximum speed is what we call our ELSD unit, or electronic limited slip rear differential. What we have here is a standard differential, but with electronically controlled clutch pack. And we can go ahead and go from zero preload to 2,000 Newton meters of preload. And what that allows us to do is to be able to transfer the torque to the tire that can give you maximum acceleration. Unlike the brake bias torque vectoring that some of the competitors use, using braking actually slows you down. Now you can add stability by braking the wheel that's unstable, but with this approach, you enable acceleration by transferring torque to the tire that's most capable of handling it, allowing you to exit the turn faster. We also have its own unique cooling system that is driven back up into the transoil cooler up front, and it allows us to stay cool during all driving maneuvers. Now, let's go over and talk about the brake system. All right, whenever you have that much engine power, you need equivalent braking power or you don't have a stable car. What we have here are a Brembo brake package that we believe is the biggest and the best in the business. We have 390 millimeter front brake rotors with six piston fixed calipers. In the rear, we have 365 millimeter with four piston calipers. Early on, we established targets to have zero fade stopping from 200 miles an hour. We achieved that. When you do that with a rotor that's this large and has this much heat dissipation capacity, there's no need for another set of carbon ceramic rotors at another $8,000 to the customer. It'd be purely waste. This car has a braking system that's fully track capable right from the factory without any additional optional equipment. All right, the tires. These tires were designed in concert with Michelin and they were uniquely designed for the CTSV. This is the Michelin Pilot Super Sport tire and it actually has three different compounds as you go from the outside shoulder to the inside shoulder. Up front, we have 265 35 R19s. In the back, we have 295 30 R19s. These are non-run flat tires, which give us great isolation from a ride standpoint. But with a footprint that we have here, we get tremendous tractive force and tremendous max lateral acceleration. We're approaching 0.99 Gs of max lat with this car. As you talk about the tire, Normally when you drive hard on the track, like Moto Man does every time we give him the chance, you wear out the outside shoulders. Well, we have the hardest compound on the tire in the outside shoulder to minimize that wear. So after a hard day of driving at the track, the tire still is pretty fresh and looks darn good. We then have the Racing R compound, which is in the uh, two center ribs. And this is from the Formula One racing work that Michelin did. And then we have the third compound, which is both on the inside shoulder and the center rib, and it is for wet traction and uh, cornering force. 
it does a great job in the wet in channeling the rubber, the water out so that uh, there is no issue with hydroplaning. But three compounds in one tire across the tread pattern, uh, not very typical whatsoever. These tires are capable of the speed of the car, 200 miles an hour. We have two reasons why we didn't use run flats. First of all, they're lighter. And whenever you're doing a high performance car, every gram counts. So that enable us to make the tires lighter, you can spin them up faster, that's response time. The other reason for not having run flats is it gives you a chance to put greater ride isolation into the car so that we can get that dual personality. So it's a refined luxury sedan, yet a track monster all in the same vehicle, and the non-run flat characteristic allows us to do that. All right, talking about the overall vehicle design. I talked about the aerodynamic work that we did to make sure that we had the right amount of airflow and we managed the airflow. One of the ways we did that is with this carbon fiber package that we have here, we're able to create the downforce that keeps this thing stable at high speed. We also have beautifully book match carbon fiber, like you'd expect on a Cadillac, which means it's mitered at 45 degrees and perfectly joined down the center of the car. With that carbon fiber CFZ package, you get a carbon fiber lower splitter, you get a hood extractor that's carbon fiber that uh, is not only beautiful but extremely functional. You get spats around the wheel openings that deflect the air around the tire for less drag. Notice the tire to body fit on this car. It's got the best in the business in terms of the gap between the tire and the body. These tires could not be three or four millimeters wider without running into the body. They're that tight, but that's what we did. And then we also have a rear spoiler on the deck lid that's exposed carbon fiber, also book match. This is 30 millimeters taller, and this is what helps generate the downforce at speed, as well as a carbon fiber rear diffuser around the exhaust tips and the lower rear fascia. And it actually helps manage the air out from underneath the car in a way that channels it and doesn't slow the car down. That's the carbon fiber that's optional. And it's a pretty expensive package. It's almost $6,000. You know what, though? One of the things we did so that you can protect your investment is we have some curb view cameras that are hidden in the lower grill area. And they actually allow you to see what's in front of you. And there's a line on the screen that shows you 6 inches to the front of the spoiler, 12 inches to the front of the spoiler. And you can park that close with the aid of technology. You know, there's some carbon fiber on this that's also standard. Every CTSV has a standard carbon fiber hood with exposed weave on the bottom side, but it enables this to have a lighter front end. So why is it important to have the lightweight hood up front? It gets us close to our objective of 50-50 weight distribution. This one has 52.7 front, 42.3 rear, and that's one of the reasons we didn't do all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive would add another 200 pounds to the front of this car, and it would deteriorate the steering response and steering sensitivity. By staying rear-wheel drive, staying closest to the 50-50 target, we get a more nimble, more agile car with the right kind of steering feel. And last but not least, the weight of this car is 4,145 pounds. Those are basically all the technical bits. We've got a few little cosmetic items to cover with you here. As you can see, this is the crystal white frost, low gloss paint. That's a limited edition run we'll be building later in the month of August. It'll be applied to both ATS and CTS. This one has gold calipers, which very nicely match the saffron trim on the Recaro seats on the inside, also available on the ATSV. And uh, I know that Moto Man calls me the mad scientist. Um, we're going to go ahead and answer your questions from the last review in a uh, separate episode coming up here uh, very shortly. Um, but if you have any further questions about the CTS that we talked about here today, please enter them down below, or please bring them up through Moto Man's social media. All right, that's it for now. I want to thank you for your attention and the new CTSV.